time to get saucy. Today we're going to make an Espanol sauce. Uh, and we're actually going to make that Espanol sauce from the beef stock that we earlier we made earlier. Um, so for that, we're going to need uh, the beef stock that we made, uh, a couple of other ingredients, as well as that meat that was actually braised in that beautiful liquid. So that we can actually make a dish and enjoy it. So, let's get started. So for the Espanol sauce, we're going to need two cups of beef stock. Here we have beef stock that we previously made. It is cooled and ready to use, as well as two ounces of butter and one ounce of all-purpose flour. Now to accompany our sauce that we're going to make, uh, we, did use, we did make uh, beef ribs when we were making the stock. And from those ribs, I actually got the meat uh, by shredding it. So here I have the rib meat. I've molded it into a square uh, along with some chicken, uh, sorry, beef stock, as well as some cooked broccoli. And lastly, some mashed potato that I've made. Uh, now this mashed potato was previously made. So now all we have to do is reheat it uh, so that we can actually bring it up to a proper temperature. Um, so as our, we are making our stock, we're actually going to start reheating these items so that we can build our plate. Uh, so we're ready to go. To get the, stock, uh, the sauce started, we're actually going to turn on our flame here to a medium heat. And what we're going to start with is our butter. We're going to place our butter into our pot. And again, for uh, this sauce, we're going to make a roux. Uh, the thickening agent that is going to make this sauce thicker. Uh, we've talked about we've talked about roux in the past, and there are three types of roux: a white roux, a blonde roux, and a brown roux. And for this sauce, we're actually going to make a brown roux. Now, once this butter is melted, we're going to add our flour and stages. And it is important to start with a spoon in the beginning so that we are able to get all the uh, angles of the pot. So once this butter is almost at a point where everything is melted, we can start with our flour. And again, we're adding that flour in stages. While I'm starting this roux, I actually turned on the oven so that I can heat the uh, shredded meat that I've uh, made and it'll be easier for us to actually just heat it in the oven. So again, working in stages, we're adding that flour into our butter and getting all the corners of the pot, all the angles, sorry. So with the brown roux, what is actually going to happen is that this is might take a little bit longer than all the other roux that we've been working with. Uh, we've made a blonde roux for our bechamel, uh, sorry, white roux for our bechamel, blonde roux for our velouté, and now we're making this brown roux for our espanol. So we do want to make sure that we don't burn the roux uh, because it's a little bit easier at this point to burn the roux now that it's getting to a darker color. And again, the darker the roux, the less thickening power that it has. Now, other instances where a brown roux is used, if you've uh, ever tried uh, jambalaya or gumbo, uh, typically those dishes have a brown roux incorporated into them. It's not just the Espanol sauce. Uh, and a brown roux gives the sauce a little bit of flavor. So uh, this is definitely going to provide us with a nuttier, more intense flavor. But it's something that we actually want for this sauce. So at this point, we're getting to the stage where our roux is a blonde roux but we just need to take it a step further. And this will typically take anywhere from uh, four to six minutes, depending on the amount of roux that you're making. If you're making this small amount that I'm making, four to six minutes is right about the time that it's gonna take. If you're making larger quantities of roux, 
uh, it will take a little bit longer. You see here on the uh, corners or the angles of the pot, make sure you scrape it in so that you can actually incorporate everything that is uh, getting color. And you can see that the color is changing. I'm going to turn off the heat and I'm just going to work that roux and I am slowly going to start incorporating my stock into the roux. What I do want to make sure is that I switch over from the spoon to a whisk and before I actually start incorporating the stock. I'm going to turn my heat back on. So I'm just going to incorporate that stock in stages, making sure I whisk it in and be very careful. So our stock is thickening as you can see right away, but we need to add more stock. So I did reserve roughly around half a cup of stock. Uh, I am going to let this sauce simmer now for 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, within that time frame, I'm actually going to reheat all the food so that we can plate a nice dish uh, and use the sauce. Uh, but if need be, we will use that so uh, remaining stock to thin out the, st uh, the sauce if necessary. So now we just lower our heat uh, and allow this stock to come to a slight simmer uh, and simmer for 15 to 20 minutes while we prepare everything else. So to reheat this shredded meat, I'm actually uh, going to bring it up to a simmer so that it can actually go uh, a little bit quicker. Um, and we're gonna place a foil on top uh, and put, the, put that in the oven for roughly 10 minutes or so, just until um, the eat meat is warmed up uh, here in the back I actually have my sauce going and it's slightly simmering uh, just you just want to make sure that you whisk it once in a while and if you see any impurities in this sauce you want to remove any impurities that the sauce might have uh, right before we actually plate I'm going to infuse it with a little bit of rosemary so it gets an essence of rosemary uh, and gives the dish a distinct flavor so our meat here is starting to uh, begin that simmering process. Once I place this meat inside the oven, I'm actually going to start reheating my mashed potato and lastly my broccoli. My broccoli doesn't need a lot of time. What needs the most time is actually this piece of meat. So by doing this, it's actually not allowing us to speed things a little bit faster. And once it's begun to uh, simmer, I'm just going to place the foil on top. Turn off that heat, place the foil on top, close that, and then just place this in the oven. And allow it to heat up. So now we're almost ready to plate. Before we actually plate, however, I'm going to reheat our mashed potato. I've added a tablespoon of heavy cream to bring it up to uh, the proper temperature that it should be. Here I have my broccoli and I've added two to three tablespoons of water so that we can bring that broccoli to temperature. And before we actually start heating everything up, I'm just going to look at the consistency of my sauce. Uh, there is a little bit uh, of impurities here, so I'll just get those out, right? Uh, it's almost... Uh, 
almost like a blanket. And what we're gonna do next is we're going to infuse rosemary into the sauce as well as some thyme. I was able to get some thyme. We want to make sure we uh, incorporate that into the sauce. And at this point, what I would do is I'm actually going to taste the, uh, the sauce for seasoning and for consistency. Sauce needs a dash of salt. And before we plate, we'll taste it one more time. Uh, consistency wise, it is a little thick, um, but I'll fix it once we are ready to plate. So let those flavors blend in for five minutes and then we'll be ready to plate. So our food is ready to go, nice and hot. We're gonna check this sauce for one more time before we actually uh, consider it ready to plate. Now, uh, consistency is just still a little bit too thick. So I'm going to add some of that remaining stock just to thin out the sauce a little bit. And we're actually going to taste our sauce before we actually plate it. So you can see it's a little bit more fluid now. It's what we want. Again, taste it. Sauce just needs maybe just a dash more of salt. Whisk it in. And our sauce is ready to go. We're gonna check on that meat. And now we're ready to plate. So there you have it. There might be some hip hiccups along the way, but what matters most is that you're able to practice, learn, and enjoy a good dish that you've made. Thank you.